Friday 2011 mystery boxes. Yeah. Again, again. I can't open it. <laughs> nice. I'll take it. Lock stitch. Lock stitch. Nice. Did you get? Uh, if you can uh, open it. Yeah, we I like the dog. dogs, so it'll work. All right, guys. So that was some of our footage from our time at MegaCon. <laughs> we had a really good time. Uh, this was our first major. Well, no, I wouldn't say major. This was a pretty minor con, um, but it was bigger than a toy fair. Yeah, which so. is basically all we'd ever done before. I mean, we did go to Spooky Empire, but we didn't really get to do any that. Wasn't that. that wasn't a that, that wasn't a con anyway? No, that wasn't a con. Anyway. I mean, it was a con, but not really. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> see what I did there? Zing, zing. Uh, so, yeah, that was some of the footage that we got while we were there. We had a good time. Um, we stopped first by the Toy USA M Collectibles mm -hmm. Twice Upon a Toy booth. I have no idea. It, it was like three different names, but anyway, the guy the guy that owns M, M Collectibles. And Toy USA. No, he doesn't own Toy USA. But the, also the guy that owns Toy yes, USA. Yes, they were both there, so we bought two boxes. As you guys saw, what we got... We'll show you now up, up and close and personal what we got. I got the Labrador Retriever. I don't know exactly how I feel about this one. I have the Dachshund one, so I mean, I guess it's cool. Um, it's it's a vaulted pop. It's retired now. It's vaulted, so I mean, it's they're valued at like twenty five, thirty bucks, which is what we paid. We paid thirty dollars for the box. The boxes were guaranteed to at least be twenty dollars. Yeah. So. So, I mean, it wasn't a loss. I just, I don't know if we're going to keep it or maybe try to find somebody who wants it more. So, Brian got the Labrador Retriever. And I got... Stitch! This is the Flock Stitch without the... Um, Fugitive Toy Sticker. Fugitive Toy Sticker on it. We all know that Toy USA gets their stuff from overseas. So, a lot of times they're missing stickers. That doesn't bother me at all. He's still super great. He's I'm a still, pop collector, not a sticker collector. Yeah, and he is something that we really did want in our collection, anyways. So this was a this was a good pull for us. Yeah, they had them around the con yesterday, anywhere between thirty and forty dollars. So yeah, I, I consider that a good pull. Yep, absolutely. I wasn't I wasn't upset about it. It's something that we actually want. So anytime it's something that I want, and it's around the value of the box. I consider that a win. Yeah, I consider that a win. If it's within ten dollars of the value, like ten dollars under, and it's something that I actually care about. I'm okay with but that. he wasn't under. He's he actually was, worth over. Yeah, so. so it worked out. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the Labrador Retriever, I wasn't, you know, it is what it is. Maybe I'll find somebody that owns a lab and they love, they wanted the pop and now they can't find it and now they want it. Yeah, maybe. Or I'll put it in, a four, in our 400 subscriber giveaway coming up. Absolutely. So. So those are our two Toy USA pools. Um, we started out at a booth that was towards the beginning and we seen some pops there that we liked and they were they were pretty good prices they really were um we actually went there we said okay let's take note of this booth we and walk around a little bit see if anybody's got a better deal we went to two other booths we saw three other booths yeah. three other booths real quick we saw one of the pops at two of them and it was much more expensive than he had it for so we literally turned around yeah, and high tail the back we, we, hit the u-turn and we're like no nah, let's let's just let's just not give this a chance to be uh taken by someone else so the first thing we got from this guy the lavender big al big al yay so this guy was 13 dollars, as yeah, you can tell good. He was cheaper than I could buy him on the Funko shop for, and I didn't have to pay the seven dollars for shipping. Yeah, so this is definitely one that we wanted, um, anyways. And like I said, if I can, anytime I can pick up a Funko shop piece for less than I can pay, yeah, getting it firsthand, why wouldn't I do that? Yeah, especially when we got the um, magician pie thing. Fruit pie. Yeah, magician fruit pie for uh, twenty bucks in a protector. Psh, cheaper than I can get it. So I wanted this one. I actually had. I think I think I actually still have it in my cart. Um, because I love alligators, me being from Louisiana and all, and Sam loves purple. So? so purple alligator with a cocktail in his hand? He's so cool! No. Yeah, no. so we actually do have the green one, so now we got the purple one. Yep, yeah. so that was a good pickup for us. And then the other thing that he had at our booth, this is the one that we saw at several other booths for much more money. Oh, yeah. I mean, Almost so, double the price. No, no some of them were double. 
the Cosmic Captain Crunch. I missed this one in the Funko Shop last year. This was about the time we started collecting, was when this one came out. Right. Um, right before um, SDCC, Ad Icons, love them. It's glow in the dark. It's a glow in the dark Ad Icon. You can't go wrong. Uh, 35 bucks, as you can tell, guys. Uh, most of the places that we saw there had him for anywhere between 70 and $80. Right, so when we saw, we saw a, one place had him for 65 and then we saw another one for 75 we said, turn around, go back to the booth that had him for 35 That's what, isn't he almost exactly that? He PPG, is exactly 35 On PPG. He's exactly so, 35 on PPG. The guy, I, 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 once I grabbed it, I said, yeah, I said, some of your other booths around here have him for like 70 75 bucks. He's like, yeah, we, we go by this website, you know, uh, you ever heard of PPG? And I'm like, yeah, sure I have. Uh, in PPG, your buzz off right there. You're trying to sell for 55, have them for 21. Yeah. So you might want to look at that again. Yeah, but no, they were really cool. They were really nice. I think they said they were from New York. Um, so, I think St. Louis. I don't know. We talked to a lot of people yesterday. Yeah, I can't did. remember we where did. everybody was from. So up next, we went to. <sighs> So we've met this guy a couple of times that owns this place called Vaulted here um, locally. We've ran into him waiting for other items. And I didn't really want to buy for it from him because I don't really care for him as a person. Um, but he had... The McGonagall. As the cat. As the cat. I haven't been able to find forever. No one else at this con... Some of these pieces that, I'm, that we're showing you guys, no one else had. They had a lot of newer like um, end games pops, like the end games pops. Like any, basically, a lot of these uh, these resellers had either super grails that were you know thousands of dollars, two hundred and above, or they had any common you could basically walk into your Fye, GameStop, Hot Topic. Yeah. Target, Walmart, they had all those. Yeah, they were trying to sell... So there was a sh place that we walked by that was trying to sell FYE exclusives for double the price that FYE sells them for, and FYE had a booth there themselves. Two, two spots down. Two spots down, selling them for their normal price. For 15 bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they had the uh, the New York Comic Con exclusive Carnage. Was that the one? Yeah. Yeah, and they were trying to sell them for, uh, for $45. Yeah. And you can buy them at the FYE booth for 15 Same thing with the... Diamond Freddy Mercury and like yeah. a bunch of other stuff. I'm like, wait, I can just go and get it brand new from FYE. Yeah. Yeah, we saw a Captain America box. Someone was trying to sell it for 70 And I'm like, I can just walk right over to that one and buy it for 40 I think it was. Yeah, it's like sometimes it makes you wonder why these guys don't go around and like check out the competition and be like, oh man. Well, you know what? Because they, they don't care. They don't care. Because we saw, we did see some people at the con yesterday that they didn't know what the Funko Shop app was. They didn't know what PPG was. They didn't know yeah. uh, how to look up prices of pops. And I guess that's why people get taken for paying seventy bucks for a thirty dollar pop because they don't know any better. Right. Um, they assume that since somebody priced it that way, it has to be. Worth yeah. Well, yeah. Exactly. Well, once again, something is only worth as much as someone's willing to pay for it. Right. So if somebody's willing to pay seventy bucks for it. That's what it's worth. I tell you what, it's worth seventy five. I tell you what, this one right here is worth seventy. I got it for thirty five. So let's go ahead and just say it's worth seventy. And yeah, I got a steal. I got a steal. Yeah. So. Uh. So, anyways, we ended up picking up um, McGonagall as the cat from him. She was thirty five bucks. She's about thirty on um, Pop Price Guide right now. Again, anytime I can get a pop for five dollars over and it's in my hand and it's in good condition, I will always take that because I'll probably end up spending more than five dollars on shipping if I try to yeah. order online. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't find this one on Macari or eBay for anywhere near 35 shipped to my door. Um, and we can't find this one. I, I don't know what, what's going on with this one, but, you know, it, it's one to add to the Harry Potter collection. I like it. Right. I like it. I, I, just, I just wish there was something other than just the cat. I wish she had, I wish she had her, like, witch's hat on or something. Because if you looked at this and it didn't have Harry Potter written on the top, you, you would think it was just it was just the cat. Right, just the cat. Oh, yeah. So up next we went to Fugitive Toys booth. Yeah, I like the bags. I like the bags. They're very cute. The guy was like, "Do you want a bag?" And I was like, uh, "Yeah, hello." I know they're awesome. They're awesome. They actually had some really good stuff there. They had uh, the the OG Sully. Um, they had them marked up about a uh, up to a hundred dollars. 
but most of the other things were pretty reasonable, like 10 to 15 within, um, even on the higher price stuff. So they had like the Superman mm. Kermit, they had the metallic animal, they had they, they had the Oogie Boogie and the mayor, and then they had the two yeah. pack, the metallic three uh, pack. No, 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 it's it it a metallic two pack, it was Fantasia Mini. Uh, Mickey, and uh, it was like eight hundred dollars, yeah, nine hundred dollars. So I was they, like, yeah, they had some, they had some good stuff back there. So, but we were eyeing two things that I really were like how Fugitive really Toys had their booth. I really like how Fugitive Toys had their booth. It's basically two glass, two tall glass cabinet looking things going down each side, and they had prices on everything, and of course they had more than one of each. And all you had to do was go to the front and tell them which one you wanted, and they just pulled it and handed it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. So you didn't have to fight people to get in these little bitty like. Yeah, it was around the outsides, and then also it's because it's glass, and you can't get like just grab it. Because a lot of the other places that had things on the outside, you notice they always had to have a staff member standing like watch. Yeah. You know, so they didn't have to do that. There was literally like one guy I think working in that booth. But so we each picked up one from there. Brian got. Oh yeah, I got the Hot Topic limited edition Blue Venom. Uh, once again, as you can see, got him for 35 bucks. Um, once again, I could not find him for anything less than this. And I really needed him for my Venom collection. I think I'm only missing one now. Or two. I think I'm only missing two Venoms now that came out. I think and the other one is another another Collector's Core box Venom. Yeah. So I'm missing that one. Um, but the new Venom line's coming out, so I, I kind of need to get on it. Right. So, but very, very... Awesome to find this one. Once again, this was the only Blue Venom I saw the entire show. So, And then I picked up the Hot Topic exclusive Bella Chicks for Strange for $40. She's going for about $35. Again, in great condition. In a pop protector, which I can't argue with. Um, again, didn't see her at anybody else's booths. Um, and but, her Azkaban outfit. I like that. Yeah. I really do. The prisoner of Azkaban. So if you guys watch the Harry Potter video, you know she was definitely on one of my top wants. We're, we're knocking off some of those so, some of those top wants on your list now. So I was really, really excited to get her. McGonagall added two nice pieces to the Harry Potter collection. Okay, wait. You wanted the BAM exclusive uh, Seamus Finnegan. Yep. Which we got sent by a fan, which was amazing. Which was amazing. You got the Lucius Malfoy. Mm-hmm. You got the McGonagall that was on that list as well, right? And you got the the three pack and that one. So I think I knocked them all off. I think you actually knocked off all your top five once. I have to go back and rewatch that, but I think I might have done it. I think you might have knocked off all your Yay, top five. Hey, cool! How cool is that? Uh, how do you feel about the new line coming? I'm really excited. Fox the the Phoenix is. I think amazing. that Phoenix looks awesome. I'm I really want to go on the Dark Phoenix though. Yeah, the Phoenix is amazing, and then I'm really excited about the Voldemort from Pop in a Box, which I did pre-order. Hopefully it comes in good condition. Yeah, Pop in a Box <laughs> is terrible about shipping their stuff, but that, that Voldemort is pretty sweet. Yeah, I like it. I like the Voldemort with, with Nagini. Yeah. I think that, I, when I saw that, I was like, ooh, that looks really good. And then today I saw it out of the box. Um, I think it was on Funko Finders, I think yeah. they showed and it, look, it looks pretty sweet. Yeah, it's pretty cool pop. So I'm really, really excited about that whole line. I think the Cedric Diggory looks kind of lame. He's just in talks. But it's Cedric Diggory. It is. I will still get it. I just think that it's I mean, of they're all going to be kind of plain. I mean, at least Harry, he's got those like... Where's Hermione in the dress? That's what I want. We, they already have it. Where? That already exists. Why, I just, why I don't, don't we have it? I don't own it, but they already have it. Oh. Just like Ron in the robes. What about what about what about Harry in his tux? See, I have Ron in the robes right yeah, here. Yeah, I, I know. And then that Harry in his tux is coming in this way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But like I said, with Harry, he's a little more easily defined because of those round glasses. Like you yeah. see that pop, even if it's out of the box, yeah. you know it's Harry Potter. Yeah, but Cedric Diggory, same thing. No, it's a brown-haired boy in a tux. Like you really would not know that it's Cedric Diggory unless he's in that box. And I understand there's nothing they can do about it. Because that's just the way it is. Okay. So, I really do like this one, though. They need to, they need to, they, they need to put this one right next to the series black like that. Absolutely. So. so, the last piece that we picked up for the day. Yeah. You want to tell them how this one came about? We saw this one in a couple of places. I saw this specific pop in a couple of different places. Um... I looked at all the boxes since I was going to spend a, a nice piece of a nice chunk of money on this one. I wanted to make sure I got it in great condition. 
and I wasn't going to take a damage box at all. I wasn't going to do it. Not for the prices that everyone is asking. Um, considering everywhere I found it was like $10, $20 over. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm not going to pay that kind of price unless, it's, unless the box is mint. And no one had it for mint except for one place, which was actually the cheapest. So he was the cheapest out of everybody by like 10 to 20 to $30, depending on where you Oh, were. yeah. I mean, we went by, what was it, uh, Plastic Empire? Yep. And they had him for $20 one, more. One, 110 but he was damaged. And Brian asked, anything, can we do anything about the damage? Can you, you maybe come down on the price a little bit? And they said no. They said no. And I, I even said, well, there's a guy about two rows over... That has it for ten dollars cheaper, and it's in, in the box is in a whole lot better condition. So anything? No, can't do it. Okay, fine. So uh, tricks the rabbit. Yay! And it came in a hard stack. And that's the reason why I got it. It's a hundred dollars no, flat. Guy just said paying cash, hundred bucks flat. Box is in mint condition, and I got a hard stack with it. So really, I mean, he was worth ninety. Or who's going? His going rate was ninety, but hey, I got a hard stack included. That to me had it in hand. Could tell that it's one hundred percent mint. This box is beautiful. Yeah, it is. This box is absolutely gorgeous. So the the story behind this one was a guy came in, traded in a Freddie Funko as Beetlejuice, and one of the Chase Kiss Pops in this one, all in hard stacks. Yeah, I. I was like, oh my god, look at that Beetlejuice. Yeah, Brian, so Brian, when he first looked at it, thought it said $120. I said, oh my god, that thing's $120. I'm um, buying that one because I think it's a lot more than that. So he looks on PPG and it's like $1,300. Well, how much does they say PPG uh, had it listed at? I think at? like $1,100. $1,100? And then Brian relooks at the sticker and realizes, oh no, 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 no. Yeah, there's another, there's yeah, yeah. another zero. There. Yeah, yeah, the zero was kind of not. A like, little yeah. smaller than the other one. Yeah, no, that's that's, that's definitely listed at $1,200. $1,200. dollars no, we're not just kidding. Yeah. We're going to buy this one instead. <laughs> yeah, I want this one. So, um, this was on one of our ad icon lists. Had to add it for that kind of price. And especially since I have. Right now, I had the money to buy them because we put aside 300 bucks for the con. Uh, so, I like them. Yep. I like them. Uh, of course, I would have. Of course, I would have liked to have gotten the flocked one. But guys, there were not many ad icons at this con at all. No. We didn't see any Toucan Sams. We did see that the uh, the Chrome Frankenberry for like a thousand dollars. Eight hundred. It was eight ninety. It was eight ninety. That one looks sweet though. Yeah. It did look sweet. I Brian at first was like that. That thing's not worth that, and I was like, babe, that's the Chrome like four hundred and something piece, like itty bitty. No, I was like, oh wait, that's the Chrome. Oh, wait, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, the update's no, no, worth no, no, what no they're asking for. It never mind. mind. We um, saw a Sunny, um, Sunny the Cocoa Chew. But he was damaged. He was damaged a lot. He was very damaged. See, they, they were asking a hundred bucks for him. That he was thirty dollars under, but the box was thrashed. Right. So we were happy to get tricks. He definitely one that needed to go into the collection. So very happy to have him. Uh, yep. I mean, I don't. I understand the hard stack guys. I don't collect them. Uh, I don't. I'm gonna probably put him in a soft protector anyway. Um, but it's nice when you buy something that's, that's that expensive for to come in it, so that way when I'm oh, yeah. transporting it home, or I know that you've stored it that way, so I know it's been taken care of. Yep. Now, if I choose to put it in a soft protector that's on my on own, that's on me. So. Yep. So, actually, if you're looking for a couple of hard stacks, I've, I've probably got about a dozen of them that I don't use. Yeah, if anybody needs any hard stacks, hit us up. Yeah, I'll, I'll, for yeah, I'll try. To, I'll try to give you. I mean, of course, you know, the more you buy, the more I'll you know come down the price for the shipping and all that good stuff. So, anything else? I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, MegaCon, I'd say, was about a six point five out of ten. I gave it like a seven and a half. I enjoyed it. A well, lot. I, I think us personally, we went to a couple panels. Um, I think that would have had more celebrities that we wanted to get autographs from. There's only one there that we wanted, and that was Stephen Amell. And we were, we just didn't get it. Uh, we just didn't get it. Because these people want mad money for autographs. Heck yeah. I mean, we're talking like 80 to $175 per autograph. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, it's not worth that much to me. It really just isn't. No, it's I'm not. not. I've never been that person that gets all like, <gasps> about celebrities. You know what I mean? I haven't either. I, I've always been like, I, I'll get more excited over like an athlete 
than I do like a celebrity. Mm-hmm. When we used to have them come into the restaurant, like I would get more excited about right. like if like a Saints mm-hmm. player walked in than if like mm-hmm. Shia LaBeouf walked in. I'm like Shia LaBeouf. Wait. Didn't Shia LaBeouf smell when he came in? Yeah, he kind of stinks <laughs> a little bit. Apparently, he's a method actor and he was playing some crazy role and like he has to be like in character well, all I, of the time. And yeah, he's a little stinky. I, I know for this con in particular, there were no WWE guys. Nope. No guys from Impact. Nope. No one like that was there, which for most of the most of the mega cons, from what I know from the past, they usually had at least four or five of them. Because we're in Orlando, and the training center for WWE is here, and like it's... Impact was here as well at the yeah. same time. I I just I don't get why their guest list was so small and so sporadic. I mean, almost nobody was there Friday and Sat Thursday and Friday. There almost nobody signing. The entire signing pavilion where we were for Friday was almost completely empty. Right. Because no one was signing. The, I think Stephen Amell signed at like 2.30 in the afternoon. He might have been one of the first. Yeah. No, the no, guys, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. 4.30 in the afternoon. One of the guys from Boy Meets World was out when we walked through at like 2 something. But just he had like one. five people yeah. waiting in line. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen um, Amell, like 30 people waiting in line just for the meet and greet at 2.30. Yeah. So. But, I mean, like I said, it was a cool experience. It was fun. Uh, I definitely want to go to some more when there's going to be some more people that we're interested in seeing and maybe waiting in lines for Q&As for and everything like that. Yeah. You know? I, I want to look in the Dragon Con at the end of August, maybe. Mm-hmm. I mean, I understand SDCC is coming, guys, so save some of your money for those pops, which I know we will, because pretty much this is our last really big haul until then, except for maybe the MLB mascot. I think that's about it right, right now. Yeah, I think that's all we're really waiting on. Um, until SDCC. So, guys, that's coming, so start stashing away your money right now. And once we know more about that, we'll definitely let you know. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I think that's it for this time. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And, guys, take it easy. We'll see you next time.